You write a lot about the word cheap. Tell me how it went from a good concept to a negative concept. Well, when the word first started being used in the uh, Middle Ages or so, it meant a bargain. It was just, uh, it was actually had a positive connotation. People would say something was a good cheap, it was a good bargain. But uh, sometime around the 1800s or so, it started to be used to describe somebody who was selling secondhand goods or shoddy goods. Somebody was a cheap John or a cheap Jack. And I think that's how it got started to be used in a more pejorative sense to mean things that were poorly made or or somebody who was kind of a hard bargainer who was kind of stingy. Is this a purely American phenomenon, the negative connotation around cheap and miserly, or is it more universal? I think, well, you know, every culture has some word that they use for somebody who's miserly. And miserly, in my, I use the word cheap as a positive, you know, I kind of embrace that term. But I use it in the same way that other people might use frugal or thrifty. Um, and uh, to me, it's, it's different from saying miserly or stingy or something like that. Um, you know, every culture has a, has a complicated relationship with money and how we spend and how we save, but I think it's particularly fraught in America because we've been a land of so much prosperity and abundance. And I think, um, yeah, yet we have this Puritan heritage of um, saving is good for the soul and spending is bad for you. So it's, we have a, an especially complicated relationship here. Was there a point in time when we became a nation of spenders and, and a point in time when we were savers, or have we always been balancing them both? It's always been both. You know, I, I found in my research, I kind of was asking the question, whatever happened to thrift in America? And on the one hand, you know, we think of ourselves as having been a frugal nation, and then we became profligate, and we became spendthrifts. That's not exactly true. Americans have always eagerly taken up opportunities to spend more money when their incomes rose or they had access to more credit. But um, the idea also that we then became a profligate nation is not totally true. I found lots of people living cheaply and living frugally. But there was one moment in American history, I think, when, when we stopped seeing frugality and thrift as a true, truly great American virtue and started to see it more as an eccentricity or um, or even a punchline, something and that was even dangerous to the American economy. And that was around World War II, because we had um, put people back to work because of the war effort and built, built up all this factory capacity. And economists and politicians were very concerned that when the war ended, we would plunge back into a depression. And they, they decided that the answer would be to create a consumer-based economy. But the way to keep all those people at work and keep the factories humming would be for America to become a society that embraced um, consumerism and material goods and things like that. So uh, I say that it's not a coincidence that Scrooge McDuck appeared in 1947. That was He was Donald Duck's miserly uncle, and I think that's when we sort of started to see thrift not as a virtue, but as something to make fun of people for. Is that changing now, given the recession? There are, people are definitely cutting back more, and uh, you know, it's out of necessity. Um, it's still not anywhere near uh, what it was during the Great Depression when people were, were literally having a hard time finding enough to eat. People now are cutting back on a lot of the extras that we've sort of at some point decided we needed. You know, there was the cable subscription or gym memberships and things like that. And they're definitely saving more. Our national savings rate is higher now than it's been in about a decade. Um, the question is whether or not it'll last. I'm skeptical that it will. You know, when you look throughout history, as soon as people are very resourceful and adaptable and good at cutting back in a crisis, but when the crisis passes, they generally return to old patterns. Is that a good thing economically and for the country, that, that we return to consumer spending? or? Well, we are a consumer-based economy now, mm -hmm. so if uh, I'm extremely frugal myself, I probably save about 25% of my income. The mm -hmm. average right now in America is about 4%. If everybody lived like me, it would be a disaster for the economy. I recognize that. Um, but on the other hand, I think we also realized in the last decade we got out of balance. We were spending too much. We weren't saving enough. In, households didn't have a safety net in case of job loss or you know, the crash of the housing market. I think what we need is to return to, to a better balance where people are saving enough to have a cushion for themselves, but also where spending is strong enough to keep the economy moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious about uh, whether there is such a thing as too cheap, if, if certain goods become environmentally hazardous mm -hmm. or, or perpetuate bad labor conditions. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a too cheap? Yeah, I do. You know, I, um, I try to make clear in the book that it's, it's not about um, buying a lot more stuff at low prices. You know, mm -hmm. to me, cheapness, what's good about being cheap is about consuming less, buying less, living in a way that's easier on your wallet and also on the environment. I think, um, you know, we do have a problem, which is that 
things are too cheap, they're too accessible, products are. And uh, that just leads to, the, you know, a disposable society where landfills build up everywhere. You know, we, we need to get back to a place where we are using our things well, we have a greater respect for our material goods, and not just kind of discarding them, buying them and discarding them because they're so inexpensive. And uh, just to just to cap things off, what was your last extravagance? <laughs> My last extravagance, let's see. Well, the boots that I'm wearing right now cost three hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> but I have. Them, but it was probably not my most recent one because I bought them about four and a half years ago. And in my mind, it makes sense because I live in New York City. I walk all the time, and you've got to have good shoes there. So I'm now going into my fifth winter with them, and if I can get them through this winter, that'll um, amortize to about seventy dollars a year, and I feel like that's actually a pretty good deal.